And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have two newcomers into the temple. They are two parts of the three-headed monster that is Three Brothers Grimm, and the and the developers of both the game and app, and app War Surge, which is meant to be a universal war war gaming affair. We will be getting into that tonight, or today in their in their case because time zones. In what in the red corner we have Nicholas, and in the blue corner we have Richard. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? How are you two doing today? Yeah, yeah good, 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 thanks. good. Mm -hmm. It's a surprisingly cool day here in Australia, uh, given that it's summer. So, <laughs> but um, meanwhile, I'm yeah. meanwhile I'm right in the middle of a winter storm with the rest of the country. Although I'm although unlike some of my some of the people down south, I'm not panicking. Okay, I don't. Um... I haven't been keeping up with the news lately. I feel like I've been living under a rock. There's but, a uh, win there's a winter storm that's hit that's hitting a lar that's hitting a large amount of the U.S. Um, and it's causing flight delays left and right. It's been causing flight delays all day, and we're ta we're talking. You're not even in. You're the temperature is low enough that it's not. There's no point in worrying about whether or not it's um, Fahrenheit or Celsius. It's just fucking cold. <laughs> That's all you need. <laughs> Put on the gloves. Yeah. Yes. Put on the um, gloves. Yeah, well, dress we're... in layers, <laughs> and and don't have too don't have too much exposed skin. Mm. Fair enough. Uh, we never really get that cold in Australia. No. Though it did get flooded um, in another state or something recently. And for yeah. for what it for what it's worth, um, it is. It is minus twenty-two Celsius over here. Hmm. No, I don't think Warrnambool has ever gotten that cold, and that's uh, where we're from. And yeah, I think we get to we get to minus degrees in Celsius, but very rarely, and usually like early morning. Well, we find that because um, we're on the coast, we I guess it's the salt air or something that. Uh keeps the temperature up a bit and we only get like frost never really any snow so mm -hmm. yeah and yes, I had to... so with with that in mind i'd like to open with the humble beginnings in a sense walk me through your your guys's first introduction to um just tabletop in general and what made it stick yeah um so i was uh the first brother to uh, get into tabletop wargaming. Mm -hmm. um, so my friends just one summer just bought a bunch of uh, 40k armies and just got full on into it. Um, so then I bought a small force, sort of uh, got a bit into it. I enjoyed the uh, the painting side of it more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't help that my friends really didn't read the rule books. <laughs> um, but then, uh, yeah, Richard just went 120% into it. Uh, he uh, got a second-hand army out of the trading post here in Australia, which was a uh, a wonderful resource back in the day. Mm. And, um, yeah, got a massive chaos force and just, yeah, just went nuts into it. So, you're, so you're, was your guys... Rich, did you want to elaborate more on your transition into... Uh, Rich, Rich you here. Did, did you want to elaborate more? Poking with a stick. Oh, it looks like we might have lost Rich there for a bit. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, Rich just uh, poking with a stick to see if he's still there. I think he might be. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> He's uh, on a different computer in the other end of the house. So, um, anyway, 
He'll be back in a minute, apparently. He's just sent me a text message. Ah. Um, well, he's computer did a blue screen of death. Yay! Oh, lovely. Um, yeah, that's what you want. Uh, anyhow, so yeah, Richard's uh, journey basically went from um, buying up tons of 40k to then hosting a like hobby group uh, here in Warnable, mm -hmm. where he got, uh, I guess, about 15 players regularly you know, camping in the garage on a Saturday. Um, and, yeah, that uh, just grew from there. Then um, a bunch of our friends moved away, so things sort of died off. And the few that remained started getting into different game systems. So... We had a bunch of 40k. And we're like, we don't really want to do a different system. Mm -hmm. So um, that sort of spurred us to start making our own system to use all the miniatures that people were collecting. Um, and over about eight years or so, we've developed it into War Surge that is today. Yep. Now. With it, I definitely got a a fair amount of um, 40k DNA DNA in through throughout it. But given that it's meant to be a universal um, miniatures game, yeah. One question that I have is is on, is in the matter of scale, because obviously, war, obviously, something like Warhammer Fantasy or 40k or even King or even Kings of War. And welcome back, Richard. Yes, thank you. Good um, to be back. <laughs> those ga those games use very large scale with a l with a large amount of units. Yeah. But I'm curious if so if you guys have taken into consideration the idea of someone um scaling down to say to say the scale of Infinity or Necromunda. Yep. That yes, uh, we have two different play styles at War Search. And the standard sort of is your typical battle, which is more like your 40k, Kings of War uh, sort of size. But then we have the advanced play style, which is completely designed for you know, your more infinity-based um, Necromunda, that kind of scale. It's mm -hmm. a lot more detail um, and a lot more freedom to the action sequences. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, um, it's... Yeah, so we're trying to create a, a completely... Um, diverse system so that, yeah, it doesn't matter what sort of scale you're going for, you can just use our system. But, and even w even with that, it looks like there's still there's still a rule, a um, all, all roads lead to rolling low on, D on D6. Yeah, um, we've uh, stuck with the D6 system, uh, just because it's what we have always used, we have way too many D6, so we thought, yeah, we'll just keep going with that. Um, we also have a D10 conversion, um, which it's very bare bones that conversion system. But we're looking at expanding on that uh, in the future. The, the the damage chart though is better suited for the D10. Mm -hmm. Like uh, each increment makes a difference. In fact, there's even a mod for the game that you can have a D6 for certain things and roll D10 for attacking. Mm -hmm. Now. Because of the fact that it's universal, obviously there's no. Well, I think you guys have plans for co for covering certain ex certain example units. Obviously, that's obviously that's only going to be comprehensive to a point. Um, do you guys have plans to um, to kind of put kind of put in de details on how on how on how somebody could build their own armies? Just from just from scratch using using your guys' system. Well, it's interesting. Um, we've had uh, some people try. You know, they bring in their miniatures from other games, and they've actually been able through the amount of special rules, which we call perks. Uh, we've, there's so many there that they've actually been able to better represent the unit in our game than wherever it came from originally, mm -hmm. which is. Uh, been good but obviously we can't do everything like there are certain things that can't be point costed to be truly balanced without the context behind it but what people can do is uh, use the app to yeah put in the prof the stats they think works with it and the perks which are the special rules design their own weapons and then it works for either 
the battle system or the advanced system, which is for the skirmish. You can use the one profile does both. Mm -hmm. And we're currently um, designing a compendium for the Kickstarter mm -hmm. that we're running at the moment, and that one will have just hundreds of profiles. We're a fair way through it, but um, yeah, we're just still adding more. And then as people are requesting more things on Discord and Kickstarter, we're like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. We'll add uh, profiles for those as well. Mm -hmm. But we are effectively just building all of those with our app. Um, yeah, all the maths there, so it's it's done. It's easy. And I think one th obviously the app is a bit is a big thing when it comes to the Kickstarter, but one question one question that was in the back of my mind is would somebody be able to reasonably run um this with ju with just the was just the rule book without using the app? Uh they're probably better off to like you can download the app for free and get a few profiles that you can create and if you're running like something more like a a Necromunda scale or Infinity scale, you could get through you know, a fair bit there. But um, uh, I mean, for a dollar a month for that, you could just create everything you could want and then um, export it or something like that. Uh, or you could just get the lifetime version of the app. Mm -hmm. But um, like the, the compendium is going to have so many profiles that if someone really didn't want to use the app, that would be the way to go. Yeah. Um, there's just going to be so much and so much diverse profiles that you could represent. Be like, oh, yeah, you know, that, that thing has power armor. Yeah, I'll just use that profile and that's going to be close enough. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'm curious if anybody's brought up th things like the Army Builder application that Lone Wolf Development had done to you guys. I'm not totally sure I'm I, aware of that. I've heard of the Lone Wolf Army Builder of some time back, but I haven't really looked at it for a while, been so flat out. What uh, Would you be able to enlighten us a bit about it? It is it is basically an app to, str to streamline army building, and I'm, cu I'm curious if um, ar if there's a army building means that you guys have planned for the app. Oh, it, ours already does that. Yeah, yeah we've, we've got, got a roster, roster builder. builder. Yeah. And so that's and already done. That's in it. I'm, and I'm guessing already, in, that f in that full ver in the full version of the app, there's all there. That's where you guys are going to have the means to um, do creation of individual units. Oh no, you can do that in the free one as well. You but can only have... a certain number of units. You just can't spam forever. That's or else it's sort of just like a free app, which we've developed this for a long time. We need a little bit of uh, <laughs> a little bit of coin. Yeah. yeah, as long as long as as long as the part of the coin is fair, I don't think I don't think anybody's going to have too much issue. Yeah. No, we've had people. Month, um, I think is pretty reasonable. We've had uh, some people uh, back in the day when we first launched it with like the dollar thing. They were like, "This feels too cheap." We had a few people say, but then some people you know, would want something like that for free. So we made the, the free version, which has limited features. And then we had actually quite a few people just get the lifetime one as well. Once they realize what the system's like, they're like, yep, I'm into that. So they get it. But um, but we had people, um, we were originally pure digital and uh, we've had the players request the book, which is why we uh, went and did that. It's taken pretty much a whole year. Mm -hmm. to uh, make the book sort of get to the point where it can actually be printed. It's been a fuss. We wanted to add a lot of extra features to the book. Um, I mean, being purely digital before, we could just tweak and adapt and change things as people came up with like, oh, you know, I think the wording for this could be a little bit different or mm -hmm. a little bit better or clearer. So then we are yeah. But um, yeah, we're, we're very happy with where it's at now. Um, but it took a lot of refining, editing, paying people to edit and review and all sorts of things. So, yeah. yes. Yeah, I and, can... And... I Sorry, can, go on. <laughs> I can certainly get, I can certainly, um, get behind, get behind a good, get behind a good amount of that. Um, I think the, the next question that I'd, ha that I'd have is, I can easily, I can easily see someone adapting this into into SF into various forms of SF or various forms of fantasy. Um, I'm curious when you mentioned that people have brought in their miniatures, if anybody's brought in minis from 
something a bit more mech centric, like say BattleTech. Yep, we've got BattleTech players that have converted across, and we've also got Gundam model collectors who are just loving our system, um, just because they could finally use their awesome mechs <laughs> in a uh, totally unique way. They can just completely edit the um, the weapons and uh, the core unit stats to be what they believe would uh, represent that Gundam. In fact, I think some of them will... Well, I've, I've certainly done this, where I've uh, scaled a certain unit depending on the point limit of the game. For example, if you're pay, playing a thousand points game, uh, you might be like, I'm just going to use this one model, mm -hmm. you know, this this mecha. And then you're like, oh, well, we're going to play a 3,000 points game. You're like, all right, I'll just change its profile to suit the point limit. So that is a perfectly viable thing to do too. Yeah, I I do remember when I was going through it and po and pondering in my head if I could use this to, uh, to, um, kind kind of ha kind of hack it into a fire emblem skirmish, um, affair. Yeah, which that that would be cool. Yep. I think it I think it could be done. I would just I would just have to, t I would have to take a different approach than just points. Also, I can't do it without without bringing in the weapon triangle. <laughs> Yeah, oh, was it spears, axes, and swords? Was it? Yeah, yeah, lances technically, but point, but oh, close yeah. enough. Long pointy thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. That that actually sounds like it would be really fun to do in our system. Um, the only I'm being a Fire Emblem be... fan myself. I'm surprised I didn't try and incorporate more of something that. <laughs> the only thing, the only thing that would be yeah. tricky with it, it, and this is the reason why I'd say. Instead of using points, I might have to blow that up and, t and take a different approach. Is the upgrade tree that you have that you have with um, classes in Fire Emblem is something yeah. I'd like to I'd like to keep in so in some form. Yeah. Well, we have a narrative system that we have with War Surge that would be perfect for something like that. Um, we've currently got a few narratives that. Uh, like to try and represent things like Mario Kart and um, oh, just so it's, ba it's bad enough that, that you ha that. it's bad enough that you are that you that that game ends friendships at the couch. Now you want to end <laughs> friendships at the table. <laughs> well, well, sometimes I like to think it's a bit more balanced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I've, I've never had a friendship end over Mario Kart, but um, yeah. I have I've, I have had some people pull. I have pulled the ultimate dick move, which is waiting until the very last second to to uh, for the for the blue shell. So ima imagine yeah. somebody's in first place; they are literal inches from the finish line, and then they get shelled. Yep, yep. I've been on the suffering end of that as well as causing that mm -hmm. to people. So I guess what goes around comes around. Yeah, but. Uh... Uh, yep. yep. Uh, yeah, I guess technically something like that could happen in Supermodel Race, which is the the narrative that we've done for uh, War Surge. <laughs> when I when I looked at the Supermodel Race PDF, the first thing that actually came to mind was the Death Race movie. Yeah, but it had some. Uh, yeah, it crossed my mind when we were making it too. Actually, mm -hmm. the idea was just to let yeah people race and fight at the same time, but we didn't go with the whole thing of uh you you know actually wiping out a racer because you could potentially deck out a car just to like just be like tons of mini guns and just like ripping things up. But the idea is if it hits zero health or zero HP, that it it becomes immobile. I think was the rule we put in. Yeah, it's so it's been a long time since we made that one. And then, then it get, it starts up again after like a turn passes or something. More like what happens in Mario Kart when someone gets you know whacked out, they get spun up and down, and then they're just effectively incapacitated for a while. Or or they get knocked. Or if say you get knocked off the <laughs> get knocked get knocked completely off the track, and that lucky two um, shows up to literally fish you out. Yep. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but uh, yeah. for a Fire Emblem, like. It, it could be done to yeah have a narrative where instead of having just a direct point increase to the unit, 
you just say, okay, well, you know, you've all got these classes that you start as, mm -hmm. and you, they might have set profiles, but then it's a set profile upgrade. So it's just like, okay, yeah, if you want to go for like the assassin class, you just you're going to get these bonuses to your existing stats, mm -hmm. or yeah, that that's very doable. Yeah, I will I will admit that if I was to tackle it, I would have to go through all of the fire emblems and just kind just kind of put a vertical a vertical line to have a, to have a more um a more un, a more universal um class list since obviously some classes only show up in cer in certain games uh yeah that at that and making sure all the tier set up setups are are where they need to be and the um the elephant in the room of how of how are you go of how would i even handle um hero classes but the big one and i'm i'm i have my own i i have my own guesses on how i might handle this but the big one is of course how the weapon triangle would be handled there's mm. there's multiple potential approaches i've i remember building a card game back when i was in high school that used a similar rock paper scissors approach to determine um priority but i am curious how you guys might tackle that whole that whole weapon triangle setup, which is essentially rock paper scissors, you're gonna do more damage if if you have that advantage in the triangle. Yeah, uh, you could uh, do you uh, our element system. That's what I was uh, gonna say. <laughs> okay. Yeah, go go for it, Rich. I've been hogging the uh, limelight. No, no, I was just gonna say that. Yeah, I would. Uh, without you, don't have to call the we uh, the perks on that weapon. Like those elements, like because we've got fire, water, ice, lightning, mm -hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff. What you would do is, if you were recreating Fire Emblem with the uh, the weapon uh, advantages, I'd probably just have it that uh, you'd apply the rule of what the elements do, which is that if an element is effective, it does double the amount of damage. Mm -hmm. But if it's uh, if it's ineffective, it does like half kind of thing which is uh that's what the elements do but you could probably even go further than that uh because if if you're doing your own narrative mm -hmm. uh you would just make it that the advantage could be like you get an improvement to the dice roll yep. for example that it's more likely to hit as well as doing extra damage like you know if you've got the the profiles are more set within the narrative or in this case like the fire emblem tabletop here, mm -hmm. you would uh, then have full control of like what limitations you would put on the profiles and weapons and things. Yeah, there's been a handful of people who've tackled um, Fire Emblem in a tabletop RPG form, but I feel a war a skirmish war game is a far more natural fit. Uh yeah. Well, the advanced play style would work fine for that. Mm -hmm. Which yeah, I was it, thinking yeah. I'd go advanced and then like yeah, put the weapon advantages in and then make sure that everyone's like a one man one model unit. Mm -hmm. And if uh, you want to make yeah. it feel even more like Fire Emblem, you could literally just limit the actions to just um like a, a move and um like they have to do a move and attack or like use perk or something. Um Rather, because normally in advanced, it is uh, a little bit more freeform, and like you can use two of any action. Mm -hmm. um, but considering Fire Emblem is all about just moving and attacking with a unit, yeah. you could just instigate that limitation into the narrative. In some in some skirmish games that I've that I've built up out of um, from scratch, I would have a short list of action. I would have a short list of actions that were either listed as half or full. So you can either do one full action or two half actions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and so now, speaking of speaking of 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 game of video games themed around, themed around war, um, I was in a conversation a few days ago with a colleague of mine, and I had mentioned that I this whole thing that I said earlier about Fire Emblem having um, being better suited to a skirmish war game, um, I think a similar th I think a similar thing can apply to um, the Suikoden series, and of course that that brings that brings the 
big the bigger question of how casting would be handled with, within the system that you guys have and how that could be potentially customized you know to account yes, for I'm different well, magic systems really familiar with that is it sui coden yeah it's a, an older rpg sort of thing yeah that's spent been... a bit final fantasy ish is that sort of a not necessarily first off suikoden is the Jap is the japanese name for the water margin one of the four pillars when it comes to wuxia fiction and is heavily inspired by that since you have 108 characters in every Oof. um in every iteration it is getting a spiritual successor in the form of aoden chronicle which is all about 100 heroes but the i the reason for 108 is those are the amount of those are the number of stars of destiny that were in the original water margin story have i not hmm. heard of this game it actually looks like right down my alley uh, i do know that an hd remaster of the of the first game is in the works but I can, which, as an aside, I can't help but suspect the sole reason that's being developed is because um, Aiden Chronicle and its action game spinoff um, Rising are kept, are um, one of them is already out and the other one is going to be out, um, I think, sometime next year. It's a is a case of yeah, it was a, it was a total coincidence that you're making this, not be not because the guy who developed that series is now working on his own thing. It would be it would be like if if um if a Castlevania game came out, just happened to come out shortly after Bloodstain did. <laughs> uh, yeah, you yes. you to you totally weren't planning you you totally weren't already already planning on this. It's just a coincidence. Oh. Yes. Uh, okay, see, I'm not really familiar with the magic system on that one, but we do have a uh, like multiple ways people can represent magic. Mm -hmm. um, so our basic weapon design system just allows for the creation of any type of attack or weapon. But we do have the incantation perks, which mm -hmm. sort of create an element of um, like will or won't work depending on uh, your roles for that, and different results can occur based on your roles. Uh, with those, yeah, with that perk. Well, uh, to use to use a more familiar example, let's consider the the way magic works in um, Warhammer. Or 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 psychic or psychic powers. If you if I need to get pedantic, but let but, um let's call a spade a spade. Yep yep. Um, in that case you ha in that particular case you had um psychic as its as its own phase. Which you would use to to randomly determine what um what powers you could what powers you could utilize depend based on your unit, you know the universal list and then the um faction specific lists, and yep. of and of course the risk of these kind of things backfiring. Mm -hmm. Um, is that something that could be replicated through per through perks and may and maybe a bit of home brewing? All the perks can do it. Yep. Yeah, pretty much anything in 40k or Age of Sigma or any of that can be recreated in uh, War Surge. There's a little bit of, like, so with the old Psychic Powers list from 40k, where you had just this big list and you rolled to see what you got, that's not exactly what you could probably do in our system, just because it's such a big list that you could pick from. Mm. Uh, whereas you would sort of, in ours, it'd be more likely, okay, well, I like maybe these three. Um, either purchase them outright or make them like a, a perk that bases itself on those three. And then it could be that you yeah, use all three in a different conjunction or specific ways based on limitations and different other perks that you could put on it. Um, yeah, so it's not like you'd have a list of like 20 different things and you could just pick... Um, haphazardly yeah uh that would require a homebrew mm -hmm. um but there's definitely each um spell you could uh, represent particularly uh, the attack spells can be fairly well translated mm -hmm. i suppose into well, I war search uh, done exactly if you wanted but um yeah 
Uh, yeah. Apart from a few niche, very specific rules that might be difficult to actually put a point cost onto. But uh, the but otherwise, any miscellaneous spells, there are a lot of different abilities like teleporting mm -hmm. and uh, going invisible, you know, uh, even making like uh, what uh, those clones, like the what do we call that one? Like the mirror images. Do you know what I'm talking uh, about? Illusion. Images? That's it. Yeah. So you could make a spell that makes it like you've got multiple clones. Uh, that's there's an ability that lets you do that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of different sort of miscellaneous things. You could be like, yep, my guy's a wizard. He can make fake mirror images of himself, teleport, and shoot fireballs, for example. Mm -hmm. Now, the... Since since I had brought up Suicoda, and since you guys were, had mentioned you you were not familiar with the magic system that it has, I may as well give the skinny. Um, yep. All of the magic is based in runes, and ev even some of the special abilities that that can be utilized. Um, later games would integ would integrate a grade based skill system, but a lot of but a lot of the spell casting is still is still going to be based on runes. And when it comes to that, your int a character's intelligence stat is going to give them a certain number of spell slots, a la the spell slots that you'd see that you'd see in Dungeons and Dragons. Yep. Um, just, just not at, just not um, as stingy. And there's only four. There's only four levels worth of um, spells. And Narratively, some some runes are a step above, and those are known as the true runes, which are significantly more powerful. But um, they have their they have their own draw they have their own drawbacks narratively, like the sun rune, which can can turn whole places into deserts. But without the dawn and twilight rune, the person wielding it could potentially go crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. This, did they actually represent the player going like the uh, the hero going crazy in the game? Like that'd be cool if they no, did that. that. No, that was that was more of a narrative thing. Oh, um, okay. In yeah. some of the early games, some runes had the potential to backfire, but I think but that was only used like twice. And the last time I remember it, that kind of thing being used, which was one of those one of those hidden stats that you see a lot in in RPGs and in, in like the PS one and um and SNES era, but more. But the important thing in this is that um, spe is that spells ha spells have that there are different levels of spells, and those levels consume e equivalent levels of charges. Mm -hmm. So I'm cur I'm curious how you how you guys might. Um, we have a use work. system mm -hmm. um, with the perks, which limits the number of times certain things can be used. Mm -hmm. um, so you could use that um, in conjunction with perhaps uh, like the twin or triune perks as well. Like it could be done. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of um, yeah, you sort of just think a little bit outside the box, and um, you could definitely do it. Yeah, but if you were yeah taking this and turning it into a unit for battle as mm -hmm. such uh really if you were to try and rep sort of recreate it you would be just limiting the sp the, the number of spell based weapons it has mm -hmm. for example and just uh and then with the perk system there's only a limited number of times during a game turn that you would get to use perks at all mm-hmm and then uh, with the advanced system, that's and then the limitation there is that the more you use the unit, the more like CP it costs, which is command points. Like how many points? You, you've only got limited amounts per turn. Mm -hmm. So the activation to... currency. Yeah. 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 So that would be where the restriction comes in differently mm -hmm. in that way. Uh, now, in, in that regard, since since both of you are familiar with the eccentricities of how 40k works um there's a couple at least rules... older versions <laughs> yeah back in the day back in my yeah. day when we... <laughs> um some with these kind with these kind of questions i get i guarantee it's not going to be an issue of addition fighting 
Okay. Um, yep. Because some hab some habits are eternal. No matter what, no matter what edition of D and D I'm talking about, I can always count on bards to suck. <laughs> for just that, just as a case in point with this kind of thing. But, Apart from that whole roll to it seduce thing, people <laughs> overuse that a bit, don't they? <laughs> Bards kind of morphed into the Diplomancer at some point. I don't know when it happened, but I think. But um, even but even with that, the problem with the problem with the Bard, as I've as I've mentioned in the past, is that it's trying to be a jack of all trades archetype in a game that's built around specificity. Hmm. Oh. Like the class system is built around is built around people doing specific roles. That's why the the holy trinity exists in MMOs. And having somebody who can do a little bit of each is gonna, is going to fall behind to those specialists. Unless you're in WoW and certain patches with druids. But yes, continue. Um, <laughs> I've I've already I've already co I've already covered WoW and how and how it fell and how it fell off um, in a previous episode of the podcast so that's already covered um and no and no um dragonflight is not going to be enough to bring me back <laughs> i no, got i got bur i got burned i got burned years ago and a lot of the stuff they're doing with dragonflight i think the only reason they're doing it is because um stuff like ff14 and new world is kicking their ass but mm. New World to a lesser extent, but point still stands. Yeah. But I think the first question that I that I'd have is it's, and this might have already been answered, but it sounds like you guys are utilizing a a um command point system when it comes to um how, when it comes to activating units. So it sounds like you guys aren't doing the phase based approach that we do both. <laughs> oh, yes, the answer standard, is yes. Standard is phase. And then um, advanced is command points. All right, that so that's how we sense. create. Yeah, especially since with standard you're going to be using more. You're going to have more units in an army, so yep. the go. idea yep. of command points would probably slow a game down to a crawl in that situation. Way too much. Yep. So is it a case of shooting phase, then charging, then charging phase, then melee? So standard goes uh, deploy, move, attack, dash, and then it's sort of like a resolve um, thing. But that's yeah, they're the basic phases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's um, like unit by unit arm. activation too, not whole army. Yeah, the whole army. Oh, is just, yeah, yeah, too imbalanced. We care very much about balance and trying to make sure that um, players all have a good time. <laughs> and it <laughs> works it's... with multiplayer too. <laughs> That yeah. so our, like our biggest the, complaint oh, when people yeah. usually talk about balance is that so many people play like space marines and then when people are making something that's to d deliberately counter space marines it's it's quite easy if you know what your opponent is going to take yeah you can counter it pretty easy um but if you're both rocking up with not knowing what each other's going to be taking it's can be a very fun balanced game yeah now a bit, a bit of background with this question. Yep. Um, one of my old, one of my old army setups was a combination of Imperial Guard and Salamander, because I like to shoot yep. things and I like to set yep. things on fire. <laughs> in, that's, that's, yep. in that situation, that sounds yep. great. Good. <laughs> but, but one of the key, th one of the key things to my strategy was. A, was a infamous Imperial Guard unit known as Usakar E. Creed. Ah, yes. I remember the memes. Mm -hmm. Creed? Yep. And you, so you probably recall the special rule he had known as Tactical Genius. Yep. <laughs> for those, Does ring a bell. Yes. Yep. To, for a bit of a refresher, the idea is any unit that he's attached with is a, becomes a scout unit, and because of the fact that that's all that was written on it, people would people would use this to turn up, especially since all you need for for a unit is just to be within two inches of each other. Um, you would have scout warhound titans out of that. Yeah, I think in one of the memes I saw it was a bane blade mm -hmm. tank. And it was just appearing from behind a light pole. Yeah, like Creed. Yeah, uh, 
So, so is the question the more question, like how? The yeah. question that I have is how you, how you would integrate how you would integrate the concept of scout units, especially when it comes to the deploy. F f and this is a question that I'd that I'd ask regarding both modes of play. Yeah, well, Rich, do you want to tackle is... this one? Or... Yeah, yeah. So in the unit perks area of when you're making a unit, there's a whole family of perks called deployment perks. Mm -hmm. Now, what you can do is you can pretty much... Uh, we've got quite a few different options, really. You can do the equivalent of just plonking them somewhere on the battlefield outside of your deployment zone. Mm -hmm. uh, you can... Like a, do like a bonus move at the start of the game before it sort of gets going. And there's a bunch of other ones too, even like to re represent... Uh, we had fun making this one. You could even do ones like uh, uh, face huggers from Alien. <laughs> so you could have one of your units attack uh, and sort of... You could like, like arguably lay an alien egg into another unit, and then when that unit dies, then that new unit will emerge that mm -hmm. you put the perk onto. Oh, like, if that makes sense. I'm yeah, probably it, uh... skipping things quickly, but uh, if the you're going idea back... is the creed element, though, where it's uh, one unit affecting another. We do have the possibility for those sorts of things, but usually we have uh, limitations on it. Like creed would have to be worth up to maybe you know. Um, half the At value half. of whatever he's influencing um so to create balance otherwise you do end up with like yeah this one little guy being like yep that warhound titan you know blah 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 you know it just although, goes ridiculous although to be fair i didn't use i didn't use titans um i had you because of the fact that um at the time one of one of my friends had had a un, had a army that revolved a lot around armor like a, a lot around the he a lot around vehicles and the like, I would yep. run. I would I would run a handful of land raiders that were terminus pattern, i.e. las cannons for days. Yep. Which could result in explosions if I rolled really really badly, but <laughs> in order, but we're ta we're talking. You need we're talking um one in a f one in a f one in four thousand chance. Since you need to have all of them roll one, all of the cannons roll ones, and keep rolling ones, and that's not going to be an easy thing to do. Mm. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Got because uh, on against tight. This is, was Titans, was it? So you'd be having to oh, just heavily armored mm -hmm. tanks yeah. and things. Yeah. And but yeah, um, with the the thing with getting uh, like that creed rule you mentioned, what how the profile building stuff works is that you would just put that deployment perk that you wanted onto the unit that you want to use it so mm -hmm. if you wanted the uh, like a tank army to pop up in someone's face you would be paying the points for it on each tank yeah is how it rolls and obviously in, in something like war surge i wouldn't even use it for the surprise tank maneuver i would use it for well su well surprise unit or even use it for um, surprise backstab. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we've even got espionage perk, which sort of can make that happen even better. Because um, where yeah, your unit then effectively deploys with the enemy, but um, and hinders them, but then after a certain number of game turns, reveals themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that could be a fun one for that. I've um, I have I have taken the age old tactic of of looking at the back of somebody's tank and going, oh, what's the that's a that's a nice that's a nice engine you got there. Oh, what's the what's this? There seems to be a bomb. There seems to be a bomb on it. Oh well, not yeah. my problem. <laughs> well, uh, and there's actually, walk away. There's another thing we did, um, like just to give some idea for the customization. You could actually make a unit that would hijack your opponent's vehicle mm -hmm. and take control of it. Oh, that is an option to yeah. do. Truth, and um truth be told um as t as tempting as it would be to to adapt to adapt um to adapt battle tech within this system somebody's probably going to already beat me to the punch the the um game that I would the game that I would I would see as a challenge for me to adapt into war surge 
would actually be the mechs in Titanfall, and just that com just that combined use of on the ground and me and mech combat. Oh yeah, I, I had a friend talk about incorporating that. Oh, yeah. It was um, it was Dan who was telling oh, me back yeah. in the day. Mm -hmm. He's a friend of ours. Um, he was playing it. And he was like that, and we were like, "Yep." Uh, there's actually uh, perks that you could actually have it that the machine requires a pilot. Mm -hmm. You know, things like the, the, that. The, the main difference, though, Rich, with Titanfall was that the pilot isn't actually in the mech. They just yeah, run, he can hop like, out of it. Different to it. Well, yeah. Yes. But mm -hmm. there's yeah you yeah you can still do it, but um, I th I, I think don't the way think I'd there's I think the way I'd balance it out when it, regarding the fact that the pilot isn't necessarily needed for ti for titans since since plenty of them have um ais that can ha that can handle things is yes and it was that they didn't perform as well when they were not embarked yeah is that correct they w they they in some cases they wouldn't perform as well the approach i'd probably take is that there are certain there are certain tactics or even certain perks that would be locked off to them if they're not being piloted We've got a few crude and manned sort of perks that might help represent that, but um, it wouldn't yeah, be hard though to add something just to sort of put the cherry on top to represent that. Yeah, mm -hmm. we we um, often we get, get player feedback and then we make new perks based on what people want. Um, yeah, it's mm -hmm. been an ongoing saga for us since we launched. Just people like, oh, I'd really want to be able to try and do this, and I just have to really think of it. How is this abusable? How is this going to be? How do I make the point cost value for it? We used to run through yeah, a lot of different scenarios before we release it. But um, yeah, we, we're definitely open for people to give us suggestions for new perks. And the, like, yeah, if you suggested, make more. Um, <laughs> if you suggested, like, oh, I want to do like a perk that lets me represent the pilot and mech relationship in Titanfall, mm -hmm. I'd be like, well, uh, maybe we would add something that when the vehicle has no passengers, that it's uh, it suffers modifiers to its attacks. For example, that, 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 that could be easily, well, pretty straightforward to turn that into mm -hmm. a thing, for example, among yeah. other ideas. Yeah. And I will... Now, I one them. Um... There's there is one IP that I think is a damn shame has not gotten a um a full a full on a full on mini war game um set up and I I do remember trying to house rule one myself and I wasn't fully satisfied with the results because I I am a big fan of Legend of the Five Rings both the card game and the role playing game and. Given how, given how a lot of it revolves around conflict between around physical and social conflict between clans, I feel I feel like it. I feel like it's you have a, you have a setup where you can have you can have different different types of armies based on the clans, and it's practically gift wrapped for you. But but um, I do. Rem I do remember one thing that I tried to house rule that I wasn't fully satisfied with was duels, i.e. right in the middle of a battlefield, a general challenges another general to a duel, which sound, yep. which may sound ridiculous, but so much of L5R is, is based on, um, is based on samurai films that the creators happen to like. So yep. in my, so I say embrace the ridiculous, but in the in terms of that sort that sort of concept of cha of challenge of a unit challenging another unit to a du to a duel um yep. how would you how would you resolve that how would you resolve that so we, that it so that would Yeah, we have a perk down? system for that. Yep. Uh is it challenger rich is that what we call yeah, it? Yeah, challenger. Yeah, so you have to, um yeah, make it too hard to figure out, but yeah. Um and it, what only affects leader units. Um, yes, what happens yeah. is um when you've got a leader, or I think it's leaders and war master perk, mm -hmm. off the top of my head, uh, those perks you can put challenger along with it, and what it does is you can run around with your guy, and if you see another leader, you can say I'm issuing a challenge against mm -hmm. them to duel them one on one, and if they refuse the duel, they suffer like penalties to their 
like weapons and things like that because they refused it. But if they accept it, uh, they leave the unit and they basically fight one-on-one without other units interfering. That's basically the premise of it. There's a small list of restrictions and things that what they um, can and can't do just to try and make it more uh, thematic. Mm. Um, like you yeah. have to stay within weapon range and things like that, or some, or work towards getting closer if you're not in range. Like there's like there's re- movement requirements. I think to make sure you just don't try and run away from it. For yeah, example, can be done, <laughs> but, and then yeah. uh, and then you can get bodyguards can step in for them, like to answer the duel, the challenge, like because if the if there's a commander that's like really squish and he's more of a tactician, then you know, and if you've got a bodyguard unit, they can answer the call to the challenge. Yep, and I know it. I know I've been doing this whole thing. This whole thing of. Of how of how these kind of things would be adapted into the system, but a lot of that is just putting the universal part of the name in, in to the um, test. And I'm pretty sure some yep. of the some of the, your play testers have been doing the same thing. Yes, yep. They really try and because our play testers are from all sorts of different uh, backgrounds for gaming. So yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they definitely uh, give us a lot to work with, with especially recommendations for new perks, just to be able to represent everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. It almost feels like our perks have doubled since we started. Probably close I don't know to if they have. Uh, I don't know. I think we had about nearly 400 when we started, mm-hmm. and we're now up to like... over 650 now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they're all like categorized into different families and sort of their general uses. Um, so you don't have to just like scroll through all 650 perks that would be nah. insane. Like if you um, wanted like a morale based perk, there's like a psychology family, for example, and if you that they take damage and they might run away, like that can be a thing. And what happens is when you pick a, a an upgrade, well, I say upgrade, but when you pick a perk or rule in this case that makes them worse, you actually makes the unit cheaper. Mm-hmm. So it saves points. So you know if people are like, oh, why would I take that? Yeah, it makes it worse. It's like, well, you actually save points. You get a little discount. When you say when you say that, one of the first things that came to mind is the is the issue of the issue of um, min maxing, which isn't as prevalent of an issue as it you as it used to be, but it is it is certainly that it is certainly there. Yep. Yeah. Um, so you're talking more like when someone has minimum stats or maximum stats, and then just or they, or they take a bunch of this they take a bunch this... of draw they take a bunch of little drawbacks to give themselves a bunch of advantages. Yep. Uh, we try and point cost things in such a way that it doesn't sort of continuously accumulate to the point where you got like zero point models. Um, yeah, and then just infinitely stack them. We've got a lot of fail safes in the app. That, yeah, prevent a lot of that. Um, and we should have even more control over that kind of thing with the compendium, just because it's a giant list of stuff that we're making. So it's, um, yeah, shouldn't have but, any issues uh, yeah. there. But. Really, when it comes to being like sort of meta minded, it's unless you know what you're up against, it's you sort of can't really guarantee anything. Mm-hmm. Really, like there are some strategies and certain lists that if you took them against one person, it might devastate them. But then you take it against the next person, and it doesn't stand a chance. Um, yeah, it it comes down to what you take. Have you ha- have you gotten any reports of 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 just completely one sided affairs? Yeah, usually against Space Marine players because. I think it comes down to if you know your opponent, it's like, oh man, that person always takes Space Marines, so I'm just going to take AP3, everything, and just cut all of their armor. Um, that's when it comes, it appears to be very one sided, but it's just because you already knew what your opponent was going to take. Mm-hmm. Um, so, likewise, yeah, they could still change up it. their list. <laughs> they but could yeah, still, I mean, uh, they could make uh, armor 4 plus Space Marines or. Maybe change it to an Aegis, which is like an invulnerable save instead, and then all of a sudden their entire tactic is just up Crab Creek. Yeah. yeah. But that seems to be the, the worst complaints we've ever had about um, imbalance is usually when someone's fighting 
uh, Space Marine players, and they just the yeah, Space Marine player gets owned. Although, yeah. I. There, I could always tell when somebody had a 40k background when I'd run, when I would run um I would I would help run infin I would help run infinity games at my LGS because first thing that they would do is is try and charge into melee. Yep. <laughs> and yep. if you know how infinity works, you know that char that openly charging like that is suicide. Yeah, all those gun countering actions occur, don't they? Like mm -hmm. uh when you run out in the open. Yeah. Now, gra now granted, and if you're if you're char if you're charging into melee with say a, with say attack, well, you you can take a few hits. <laughs> mm. Yep. But yeah, no, you can. And and that's the thing you can sort of um, you can uh, more or less represent like even the infinity situation. Mm -hmm. And where you can even yeah, like advance is pretty similar in a lot of ways. Um, yeah, one of our friends got into Infinity and was just like, "All right, now we got to try and make a system." Because they're just like, "Man, I love the Infinity; it's so good." And then they just listed all these things they loved about it. And it's like, "Okay, now what don't you like about it?" And then we fixed those as well. And that was a lot of the core reasoning behind our advanced. Mm -hmm. um, and then we fine tuned it when um, a bunch of people were like, "Oh, we want to do this sort of stuff from Necromunda." It's like, "All right, all right." <laughs> yeah, but we just keep adapting, keep changing, keep um, keeping on top of what players want. Mm -hmm. yeah. And truth be told, if I was to if I was to appro approach um, approach something like magic, I would I would rather. I would rather introduce some randomness by u by utilizing um utilizing something like cards. Like using a yeah, using oh, yeah. a set of playing using a set of playing cards that your that which your magic ability determines how many cards you can draw. Essentially turning spell casting into poker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that that's uh... You could just do that as a mod. Um, we recommend that if players do have something that they really want to incorporate, they just write it up as a mod mm -hmm. and get all the players to read it and agree to it. You yeah. know, it's just... It, we yeah, want we people to be flexible, and if it makes it more fun for them, that we're all for that. Yeah, you know, um, it definitely sounds yeah. like this is a, this is approaching the universal um, motif that... I've wa I have admittedly wanted for a while because this is not my first rodeo with the idea of a um, genreless uh, miniatures game. Have any of you ever heard of the Genesis Project? Yes. Yeah. There's a few like that now. Around that was that was the main one that I had heard of that what that was attempting that, but it's kind of married to its three ages system, so it's not really. As universal as it claims. Yeah, I do remember. We don't know about the about details that. specifically around it. We just know of it because mm -hmm. someone was like, "Oh, would this guy? Yeah, would this be a problem for you guys?" And we just looked at it for a bit. And we're like, "Not really." I, I think that um, you know, people either want to go for that kind of thing or go for ours. You know, like it's, it's we don't want to be the complete dominating force of the universe or us. I've already I already no, 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 used to deal with that enough with that enough from GURPS fans that claimed that GURPS is the only TTRPG you need. Yeah, mm. no, like we just want people to play and have fun, mm -hmm. and let people represent things how they want to. Oh yeah. yeah. Now and that, yeah, with that with that in mind, how what are you what is the page count you guys are planning when it comes to the rulebook and the compendium respectively? Well, Which let's see. Yeah, so the rule book, um, just focusing on the rule book for a second, it's uh, at 300 pages, but the core rules are only like a portion of it. There's a lot of the book that's like optional extra ways to play mm -hmm. and like uh, guidelines. There's lots of photos. There's even an entire story in there as well with art. Mm hmm. And that, uh, that story and covers systems and narrative systems and all sorts of goodies. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, so that we put the story in because uh, a lot of players are like, I want a, a law based reason as to why I can have my um, power armored superhuman soldiers like fighting cavemen. 
you know, like, and how is it fair when it's like that? But um, there, yeah, all that's covered in the story, and it's also got its own story within it of um, with our characters, like the Prime Alchemist mm-hmm. and that. But the Reels. but yeah, the in those pages though, yeah, we like Nicholas said, we've got uh, campaigns so that people can build like a map campaign where you control an empire. Mm-hmm. And uh, what that does is, yeah, um, you can. Man, I've lost my train of thought. Where was yeah, I going? Basically, with that? we use a hexagonal um, map-based system where you can add buildings and increase the size of your roster based on like where people are attacking you. Because uh, you might have some barracks or command posts and those sorts of things nearby that would give you a, a tactical advantage, so you get more points to use in your roster. I remember um, now. I remember what I was going to say. It was that you can even play it as a board game in its own right if you <laughs> if you didn't yeah, well, uh, if you use the there's a auto resolve system in it mm-hmm. because well, I found like I used to run a club that played a few different games and what would happen is if someone didn't show up, you know, it would happen from time to time and or you know it, it just sometimes people are too busy with other things or anyway what we put in there is a system where that you can resolve what happens on the battle tile uh through a roll-off with lots of modifiers so if someone has a uh, a bigger empire or if there's like the buildings that nick mentioned just before like the barracks and if there's fort- fortresses and stuff that it affects uh how likely you are to take the tile so you could just use that and actually play it like a board game Mm-hmm. So that's with yeah. the map system, but uh, there's also other ways to play campaigns, like the whole slow grow thing is represented with linear. So you might start with just like a couple squads of troops, and then build up through the course of a campaign, and that's what the linear is. And then we have a pathway campaign system where you literally is the outcome of the battle. Uh, whoever wins it decides what path of battles happen after that. It's like a. Have you ever played like games like Star Fox? Yes. With with the map campaign. I mean with the map and you're like, oh if you do the mission this way, it goes this way, or if it you know, it's that kind of thing is what the pathway campaign does. Yeah. I will admit that when you mentioned the campaign setup, the first thing that came to mind is a four X game. Not any specific one, just the just the genre in general. Yeah. Um, I'm not totally familiar with four X game. Is that a term for it's like a tile stuff um have you are you familiar with civilization yes yes i haven't played it but i am familiar with it so it's that kind of yep that is what? that is one of the um the semin- defining sort of ones yeah hmm. yes. but yep. uh and we also, uh, sp- speaking of like civilization, that there is multiplayer is very much welcomed in the campaigns and things. Like if multiple players attack the same tile, you get like multiplayer games. Mm-hmm. Basically, uh, you can play multiplayer normally. Like you know, if you wanted to play three, four, five players on the one board, that is easily done. Mm-hmm. With because uh, the way the activation system works, it goes clockwise around the table. So. And when people attack, the casualties aren't removed until the end of the fighting, like the, the end, end of the, of the phase, phase or in advance, yeah, end of the actions. So, mm-hmm. but, yeah, and it gives people a chance to fight back, both in standard and advanced. So, yeah. Now, yeah, um, yes, go on. I do want to. I do want to offer my congratulations on how on how well the Kickstarter is going because you're. All, you guys were only asking for 1,000 Australian, and at the time of this recording, it's at 41.1,000 Australian, with plenty of time to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we wanted plenty of time for advertising, plus we knew that um, to get the books printed, we are going to need uh, a fair bit of time. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I didn't, we didn't know either, like, with Christmas... Some people might prefer to be like, oh, I'd like to pre-order it, you know, before Christmas. And then sometimes people like after Christmas have got, you know, some spare, some spare money from like cards or whatever. And then they're like, oh yeah, I can uh, pre-order that, you know, so 
yeah, just giving people the flexibility on either side of the holiday season, as it were. Mm-hmm. Um, holiday hell, as I call it. <laughs> it is a bit crazy. The traffic's ridiculous, even like where we are, and it's like a small city where we are, and yeah. it's just we're like, a popular so tourist sort of and holiday location, though. So um, yeah, our town just doubles in size <laughs> over the Christmas break. Yeah. Yeah. But mm-hmm. um yeah, no, so the yeah, the Kickstarter is going really well. Um we're arming and ahhing as to whether we get some three D artists involved and start releasing some STLs as like little bonus because it has just gone way better than we thought it would. Mm-hmm. So we're thinking, well, how can we give more to our um existing uh backers? So yeah, we're we're thinking that if we get over our current stretch goals, we'll start introducing uh, I'll start hiring 3D artists to... Um, well, we've got some that we, we know and we've already done work with. Um, so we'll go with them for possibly yeah, doing some of the characters from the lore that's in the War Surge lore. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and just make like a little faction or two for that and, yeah, give more value for money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for yeah, STL files. I mean, I mentioned, you know about 3D printing? Oh. Uh. I know I know about 3D printing. I I don't have I don't have a 3D printer because of spa- because yep. of spacing issues. Also because of yeah, the middle yep. of nowhere. Yeah. Well, yeah. we yeah, just figured that STL files are the files that uh, people can put into their printers and mm-hmm. print models. So, we just figured that that's a little bit of then value that we can deliver digitally so it mm-hmm. doesn't up our um, overall cost. Um, it's just the cost of getting the models designed. Um, and it's also, yeah, can help, uh, people get more involved with the law behind War Surge, which pretty much, as far as we know, very little people actually read the law. They just like the system, but, uh, we're pretty proud, proud of the law. It, um, uh, it's a neat little story, but, um, yeah, it'd be nice to get people more involved into that. Mm-hmm. And then, um, uh, with your question before asking about the, the books, uh, so yeah, the 300 page rule book had all those things we talked about, but the compendium is literally like we've said before, a, a lot of presets. I mean, we've got uh, looking the way the Kickstarter's going, and they're all going to be unlocked, I would guess, uh, by the time it's done, and that would uh, give us, I think, what 40 or so factions. Yeah, based off um, popular universes and game universes and all kinds of things. Probably so be just reimagined. I reckon it'd be 500 plus profiles by the end of it. Um, which, depending yeah. on how we space out with artwork and a bit of fluff for each unit and that kind of stuff, we uh, it's probably going to be another 300 page book. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> yep. That that certainly makes sense. And what are you guys shooting for as far as a release window? Not a date per se, but a ballpark. Uh, uh, well, we've already ordered a bunch of the rule books, so they're being made now. Um, it just comes down to, yeah, like they reckon it'll take them about two months to print what we've ordered, and then it takes them so long to get it to us, and yeah. Um, what we said is our estimates on the um, the Kickstarter page, which I think was what, like June? Around. June, yeah. The rule book and a little bit later for the compendium because we still have to finish off like once the Kickstarter well at least once we finish doing through the stretch goals for the compendium, we can then finish that off. I think um, it was a bit longer that. for the collect oh actually. No, I'm mixing up with the Italian translation. The Italian one is in September because it's yep. gotta get translated. But everything else I think we're aiming for June. That's Including the um, even the collectors one with the leather cover and all that stuff. Yep. But yeah, so, so mid yeah. next year we're we're hoping. Hopefully, it's a little bit earlier. It would be nice know, to, who it, knows. and it, it could be earlier. It's just uh, we're trying to give ourselves a bit of breathing space because we look. I've never actually done a Kickstarter before. This is my first rodeo, so to speak. Uh, and it's sort of just been a learning curve for me. I think Nicholas has, knows a bit more about that whole scene than I do. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's been interesting. 
but um, pretty much all my stuff has always been digital products. And even with War Surge, it's all been digital products before. So having to actually make a physical product, post it out, blah, 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 it's a learning curve for us. But um, being in Australia, the postage is just killer. Like, that is the one thing that I just wish there was this teleportation system. Hey, let's, let's, all right, every scientist that listens to this, I want teleportation for books. <laughs> Did you ever watch The Fly? Are you sure you want teleportation? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I haven't seen the whole thing, but I get the premise. Yeah, you don't want to. You saw fly the Simpsons knockoff yes. one. I did see the, the Simpsons S version of that. With that Bart doesn't count. Fly, yes. You have to absorb the. You have to absorb the, the true horror that is the Cronenberg version. I think I've seen uh, some images of it. Yeah, it's uh, it's something. But yes, um, yeah, but uh, from Australia, postage is brutal um and we want to make sure that the book is the highest quality that it can possibly be mm -hmm. and to do that yeah we pretty much have to release everything from australia so yeah that ups but, the price of postage which has been yeah. probably a really only complaint so far from people with the kickstarter is just like if it's overseas they're like oh the postage is killing me it's like it's killing it is, us yeah. too few messages wait, like, oh, I would have loved to back this, except the postage. Wait, you guys are in Australia. Yeah. Everything is trying to kill you. Yes, including the post office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. just saying, some, <laughs> just saying, the postage trying to trying to kill you guys, isn't that a little bit redundant? It is a bit, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. No, so, um, yeah, yeah. With Australian wildlife, everything's trying to kill us. Mm -hmm. But that's why we stay indoors. That's why we play tabletop gaming. <laughs> yeah. Uh though not it's not like it's not like I um am one and one to talk about about deadly wildlife given my experience with with bears and the one the one the one encounter with a moose. Uh, yeah. which it's like I thought they were herbivores. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, what they are are assholes. Not herbivores, <laughs> not carnivores, just assholes. Uh, what did the moose do to you? I don't talk about it. Everyone <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just goes silent for the rest of the, the, the and, session. <laughs> well, when it came to, when it came to the bear, I was camping. I was camping at one at one spot, and I I wake up and I see this black bear sleeping off in the distance, and I'm like, I'm getting out of here because I don't want to be anywhere near that thing when it wakes up. No, no. I've uh, there's what? wild boar in our part of Australia, and um, I've gone hiking quite a fair bit, and one night, um, yeah, I was out with some mates and we were, yeah, just settled in and then this boar just starts uh, wandering through our camp and uh, decides that uh, right next to my head through the sleeping tent was where it was going to sleep. <laughs> so I had uh, boar breath on me the, the whole night. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was uh, Wild boars are nothing, to, are nothing to mess around with. No, no, we were all just stayed in our tents, and it uh, eventually, in the morning, got up and just wandered off into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. um, so we were quite lucky in that regard. <laughs> Except, yes. uh, yeah, I, I'll never forget its breathing and its breath. Yeah. <laughs> no, that no, that'd be the kind of thing that would probably give me nightmares for months. I remember a story actually. Uh, remember, uh, what was it, Dane, your friend? Yeah. Was, um, he went, he was hiking, and then he stepped on something, and he looked down, and he had a snake under his boot. Yep. And he, and he was just like, oh, okay, and then he uh, he chopped its head off. Yep. Because it's like, if I take my boot off that thing, it's going to bite. It was pissed and, off. Uh, yep, oh, wow. and a lot of um, snakes here are poisonous, or most of them mm -hmm. are. So. Well, you know why a snake yeah. won't, won't bite a lawyer, right? I haven't heard this one. I have no idea. Why would a snake not buy a, buy a lawyer? Professional courtesy. Uh huh. But ho 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 ho. <laughs> <laughs> but with with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you guys for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness that happens around here. Ah, so yeah, thank no, you, thank very you much. for it's having us. Yeah, yeah, and that's great. Anytime you guys see fit to return to the temple, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Very nice. I'll drink to that. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!